Some say if you see the shuck, it's a sign of your imminent death. Is seeing, believing, We all now live in a modern world, supposedly an educated world. And this world wraps us in a comfort blanket of gadgets. Gadgets that are either designed to basically make us move less or think less. But what galvanises these gadgets into their supporting duties? It's actually the electron. A theoretical, invisible, tiny little thing. It could be said that the Electron is 21st version of folklore. It's the theory of its existence that we're brought up on and also the trust that it will power these gadgets that we thrive on. A myth is the term given to something that cannot be seen or a set of circumstances that cannot initially be explained. A myth could be said to be either an electron or a beast. Are we so different to our ancestors, to those that have gone before us, as they talked and told the stories and the myths around the campfires, for us only to now ridicule them. Electricity is a function of electron movement. The electricity that powers our gadget dependent lives and in doing so gives tangible reasons to events that we first cannot understand, as well as to bite and shock us should we not heed its warnings. The mythical black shuck, a creature that has been said to be observed more times than the electron itself. The black shuck, a large rough coated dog with glowing eyes. The beast itself is said to haunt the lanes and cliffs and fields of East Anglia and Suffolk. Some say if you see the shuck, it's a sign of your imminent death. Whilst others say if you see the shuck, it means that within that calendar year, you will draw your last breath. Some say the shuck has two eyes. Others say that he only has one that glows. Now I can understand this because if I saw a black shuck with one eye, that means I would be viewing him at profile. Should I see a two-eyed shuck, that means I would be absolutely fixed within his sights. Now when did the black shuck first appear on our shores? This is open to debate and conjecture. One line of thought is that he arrived with the marauding Vikings, a present from Odin, the Norse All-Father God, to his worshippers as they invaded our lands. While some say this is not possible, that the Shuk is not a gift from the gods wrapped and parceled in a lightning bolt, because Norse mythology has wolves present, not dogs, and it is British and European folklore that is peppered with black dogs. The Shuk continued to put in an appearance every now and again until one particular night. August the 4th, 1577. That night, a great storm ensued. And at the Holy Trinity Church in Blythborough, the congregation sat, listening, riveted to yet another excellent sermon. Thunderclaps were heard, lightning flashes, and the church doors were flung open. Initially, a great gust moved down the aisle. The candles were snuffed out. 
The congregation cowered in fear, yet a man and a small boy dared look sidewards and glance into the nave. There they saw it, a one-eyed black shuck as it made its way down towards the altar. Then, as a sign of its true power, the steeple acted like a conduit and the steeple itself fell through the church roof. The shuck instantly exited the church and to this day, you can still see the scorch marks on the north door as it left. Would I fear an encounter with the black shuck? No more than I would fear living in a world without possibility. The possibility that the oceans can be sailed. The possibility that one day man will fly. The possibility that one day you will not need a flame to cook your food. Because isn't it the possibility that sparks the fire within our inventors? that lead to the creation of our modern day gadgets that now we so much depend on and fuel our modern, educated world. If the invisible electron does truly exist in the form that we are assured it does, then equally so it is not beyond the realms of possibility that the mythical black shuck does exist in some form or another, walking the lanes fields and coastline of East Anglia and Suffolk. To me, however, what can be proven beyond any doubt is mankind's continual need to flirt with the possibility of things that exist that cannot be seen. And in doing so, stretch and open our minds. Things that our ancestors would describe as mythical beasts, and divine gifts from the gods.